So there you go. That gives you an idea quickly of what Massive can do. As you see, it's a, a very, it can be a very gnarly, aggressive kind of synth and truly befitting of the name Massive. So the first thing I want to do is kind of walk you through what we're even looking at and show how it compares to what we just learned with Monarch. So it is a similar looking synthesis architecture to subtractive synthesis and except it offers you a lot more options. So like Monarch, we have three different oscillators. Now we also have a separate modulation oscillator. So instead of having to use oscillator three to do double duty, now we have its own modulation oscillator capable of doing even more advanced stuff. And you can point that directly to the different oscillators or filters. You also have a noise generator with much more than white noise, all different flavors of noise to kind of craft your sound. Now, two filters as opposed to just the one. And we have low pass filters like we were used to there, but now we also have high pass filters, notch filters, band pass filters, and uh, some crazier ones. Like for instance, the scream filter, which you just heard, a very aggressive filter with its own feedback loop to get those gnarly squelchy kind of stuff. So comb filters, acid filter to give you a more old school Roland uh, acid, you know, house kind of 303 style sound. Moving on from there, and you can blend between the two different filters and how you want. So imagine, yeah, one high pass filter, one low pass filter gives you a lot more options right away. Moving on to the amplifier. So we know Monarch had an amplifier and it had the ADS controls, right? Now this one does not have it until you would click on number four here. So this little number four is the fourth envelope. You can see there's one, two, three, four envelopes inside of Massive that can be assigned to many different things. So by default, anytime you come to load a new sound, it is the fourth envelope that will be your amplitude envelope. And now we can actually see what an ADSR looks like and visualize it a little bit better. Uh, for instance, the attack, the time it takes from for the signal from key press to get to full amplitude. Uh, the level is your sustain, so it's not called S, it's called level here. And the decay, the time it takes to come down to the sustain level and your release. So you can now visualize it much better to kind of give you an idea of how this is shaping your sound. Okay. Moving up from there, we have four dedicated LFO sections. Now we don't have to worry again about using oscillator three to be the LFO. We have a much more advanced LFO as well. In fact, we have two LFO shapes and you can use this like a DJ crossfader to, to between them or as a mix of them. So from here we can, Pick our different shapes, even move them around as we'd want, or select some really gnarly weirdo kind of uh, filter modulation for your LFO potentially. Okay. Moving on from there, we have an effects section, two effect slots, including some of the classic tube to give you that really, again, aggressive, overdriven, distorted kind of sound. And maybe you just want to use a reverb or like the classic dimension expander, which will give you a nice wide, big, huge sound. EQ, simple EQ section to shape your sound further. And then two more effects sections. These ones called insert effects. They're different. And importantly, they can also be routed differently. So you can actually choose where you want the insert effects in the chain of the signal chain. And it's going to give you different audio results based on where you actually put these insert effects. And then lastly, the macro controls here at the bottom. So everything is going to be like a top layer of controls to give you immediate playability. For instance, on that last one, I'm turning filter knobs and wavetable positions and effects mixes and all this kind of stuff. It's great for that. So one thing I do want to notice, talk about is that I'm using this inside a machine now. So before we were using the complete control, which I can still use inside a machine, but the machine studio is going to load your plugins and give you that same control we were using with the complete control. So all your different pages of controls, if I want to change the pitch of the oscillator, all this stuff is easily accessible. What's great about it though, is that now inside of Massive, I can go ahead and actually, you know, sequence different parts. Whereas in complete control, you're just loading the instrument and playing it, and you'd have to use a another sequencer to, to make your patterns. For instance, load inside of your DAW, like Logic or Ableton, and then write the parts. Whereas in machine, it's a sequencer, a sampler, a groove box, a drum machine, all of that. And I can do it all within one. 
Uh, I can even browse through all my different sounds. You can see I have over 3,000 massive presets uh, to choose from here. So great options, and I wanted to show you inside a machine so you get an idea of the other ways you can use it. So now let's look at what really makes massive unique and different.